Today, in a 6-3 decision, the Supreme Court has sentenced the Earth to burn because they are saying that the Environmental Protection Agency cannot actually regulate greenhouse gas emissions, which cause the planet to warm up. So as a result, this is going to be catastrophic to say the least. So as CBS News reports, the Supreme Court on Thursday limited the power of the Environmental Protection Agency to regulate greenhouse gas emissions from power plants, delivering a significant blow to the Biden administration's efforts to fight climate change. The court divided 6-3 along ideological lines in finding that Congress, through the Clean Air Act, did not grant the EPA the authority to adopt on its own a regulatory scheme to cap carbon dioxide emissions from power plants to combat global warming. Chief Justice John Roberts wrote the majority opinion while well, the court's three-member liberal bloc dissented. The decision is a victory for a group of Republican-led states and coal companies in their years-long bid to curtail the EPA's power to issue regulations intended to curb carbon emissions. So the Supreme Court unilaterally is saying this agency that Congress created to do just that, protect the environment, they can't actually do that. We decide. This unelected group of rogue extremists, we say, no, you can't do that. I just, I don't know how to be, begin to even process all of these decisions because one after another, we're losing civil rights, civil liberties, and now we're losing the right to a clean planet because the only administrative body in our country, country that had the authority to do something with regard to climate change, the Supreme Court is now withdrawing that power. It's just, it's draconian, it's dystopian, and this is just the beginning. So I want to get some reactions that kind of uh, highlight the implications of this case. Sam Cedar explains, Today, SCOTUS conservatives block our government from addressing climate change. In near future, they will stop our government from protecting workers, regulating our financial systems, keeping our air and water clean, our food safe, and quashing any attempt to expand health coverage. And he's right about that. Now, prior to finding out the scope of this particular case, Nathan Tankis wrote, go buy some USDA inspected beef, have some FDA approved drugs, go get cash from your FDIC insured bank account, bask in the warmth of a legal structure that is disappearing. Now, Nathan here may have been off on his timing, but there's no question that all regulatory bodies will be stripped of their authority if this rogue court is not reined in. Now, Ryan Grimm came in with a really good point saying, so according to the EPA opinion, if Congress doesn't want the EPA to do what Congress charged it by law with doing, shouldn't Congress pass a new law saying so? Yet Congress hasn't. Instead, the court just rewrites the law itself. Exactly. They should run for Congress if they want to rewrite laws. Now, finally, AOC says, catastrophic. A filibuster carve-out is not enough. We need to reform or do away with the whole thing for the sake of the planet. And she's right about that. People are going to attack her for being an extremist. But let me remind you that climate scientists have been very, very clear. They've told us repeatedly that time is running out. We have to take action right now to save the planet. Otherwise, we're not going to have a future. And lawmakers have not gotten that through their heads yet. But the one body in our whole government that was actually doing good when it's not being run by Republicans, where they strip it of its authority, now, because of the Supreme Court unilaterally taking away its power, can't do anything. So we are basically unarmed going into this climate apocalypse with nothing to protect ourselves. It's all but a certainty at this point. And so what AOC is saying is extreme, yes, admittedly, but necessary because it's either the Supreme Court or our habitable planet. Abolish the court or expand it either way. We can't let this happen. They have to be reined in. The court needs to be expanded. As Brian Tyler Cohen pointed out, when the court was expanded in the 1800s to nine justices, that was to kind of match the uh, nine appeals courts, circuit courts, excuse me. But now we have 13. So there you go. There's some out for you. Just take action, Biden. Otherwise, we're all doomed. So make no mistake about it. AOC is saying that the court has gone rogue. And in her dissent, I think that Elena Kagan also makes it clear that this rogue court is absolutely tyrannical. 
Justice Elena Kagan, joined by Justices Stephen Breyer and Sonia Sotomayor, criticized the court's majority for imposing limits on the EPA that, quote, fly in the face of the statute written by Congress and accused the majority of substituting its own ideas about policymaking for Congress's. Whatever else this court may know about, it does not have a clue about how to address climate change. And let's say the obvious. The stakes are high, Justice Elena Kagan wrote in dissent. Yet the court today prevents congressionally authorized agency action to curb power plants' carbon dioxide emissions. The court appoints itself, instead of Congress or the expert agency, the decision maker on climate policy. I cannot think of many things more frightening. And this is a Supreme Court justice saying this, saying, I can't think of anything more frightened that the Supreme Court is doing this, that they're going this far. Now, a lot of people compare this era to the Lochner court, where they were constantly gutting worker protections one after another after another. And sure, that's true of this era. They are comparable to the Lochner era court um, because they don't really care at all about workers, but they're much, much worse than the Lochner era because their decisions now don't just affect workers in the United States. They have global ramifications. If the Supreme Court says that we, the United States, have no ability to rein in these companies that make us the biggest polluter on the planet, that affects every single living being. So we're at a situation where this rogue court is essentially dooming all of us to climate apocalypse. And we just have to accept this for two, maybe three decades when the makeup changes, which by then we'll be out of time. So I don't know how to come up with some sort of hopium for you all. I don't know how to find some silver lining. It's bad. And if you tune into my show tomorrow at 9 a.m. when I talk about something that they're going to cover uh, in the following year, you'll learn very quickly that this is only the beginning. It's going to get a lot worse. So, yeah. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today.